this video, I'm going to talk about the directional derivative. So far, we have taken uh, derivatives with respect to x. So this would be the tangent line in the x direction. So let's say we go to a certain point on this graph, I don't know, say right there. And then if I go in the x direction, I could find the tangent line. Um, or we could find the tangent line in the y direction. So I could go to that same graph, but go in the y direction. And it's a little bit harder to see on this guy. So in the y direction, I'm keeping x constant, so the tangent line would be about like that. That's all we've been able to do so far. But what if I want to find the directional derivative, which is a derivative in any other direction other than x and y. So what if I want to find the derivative in that direction, and I want to find that tangent line instead? That's what the di directional derivative does for us. So there's a couple different forms of it, depending on what you're given. So first one, if you are given the vector for the direction, so this vector a, b, say, is the, is the vector in the x and the y direction that you would like to go, um, note that this needs to be a unit vector. So it needs to be of length one. Then the directional derivative, I'll give you some notation here as well. The directional derivative of a function. So this says that we are taking the directional derivative of a function in the direction of u. So if we're given u, then that directional derivative is going to equal the partial of f with respect to a at our point x, y. Sorry, I think I just said something a little odd. The partial of f with respect to x at the point x, y multiplied by a plus the partial of f with respect to y at the point x, y multiplied by b. And so we multiply it, we basically take a dot product of the partial derivatives with that unit vector AB. So there's one way. Um, another way to find a directional derivative, if you're given an angle theta from the positive x-axis, then the directional derivative would be that partial of f with respect to x. I'm going to I'm going to shorten this a little bit and just not write at the point xy. Um, but we'd multiply that by the cosine of theta plus the partial with respect to y times sine of theta. And the reason this works pretty simple if you took that vector u and the theta is from the positive x-axis, you can directly relate it to a in the x direction, b in the y direction. Remember that u is a unit vector, so it's length one. Cosine and sine for a and b will kind of pop out of that triangle. All right, and a third way is to use the gradient. Now, I guess I need to probably tell you what the gradient is before you can actually use it. Um, so a gradient gradient, we say that the gradient, and there's the notation for it, of a function, and let's say that it's a function of x, y, and z. It could be just a function of x and y, but a gradient is a vector of the partial derivatives. So you take the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, and put them in their respective components of a vector. 
So if we used the gradient and we had something two-dimensional, so that means that the gradient would only have an x and a y component, the directional derivative is going to equal the gradient of the function dotted with that vector u. So if it's two-dimensional, I guess, actually, I could probably just erase this and say that's just in general. Now if it's two-dimensional, we would want to write out that directional derivative. We could write it out as partial x partial y dotted with a b. So that's just if there's an x and a y component. Um, if there's a z component as well, so if we're talking 3D, then the gradient would have three components, a partial with x, a partial with y, a partial with z, and that unit vector would also have to have three different components, and we could find a directional derivative that way as well. All right, so that's all the ways to find directional derivatives. Now let's do an example. Um, so let's find, find the derivative of the function x cubed plus 2xy. Uh, let's find the derivative when we're at the point 2, 1. in the direction 1, 3. Now we can either use that first equation that I gave you, which was that the directional derivative of u, sorry, I had some hard time with the pen right there, the directional derivative of u is equal to it was that partial of f with respect to x at the point x, y times a plus the partial of f with respect to y times x, y times b. We can either use that or we can use that gradient and dot it with the unit vector. And I'll show you both ways. They both pretty much require the exact same amount of work. So. Either way in this, we need to find the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y. So the partial with respect to x is going to be 3x squared plus, we're taking the partial with respect to x, so y is constant, so 2y. The partial with respect to y, now x is constant, so that first term is a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero. The next one, if we take the derivative with respect to y, x is constant, so we just get a 2x. Now we want to find these partials at that certain point x, y, so we really want to plug in those values of 2, 1 into both of these and find, the, find that kind of slope in the x direction and slope in the y direction. So if we plug in 2, 1 into that partial with respect to x, let's see, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 2 would be 14. And if we plug in 2 into that partial with respect to x, we get 4. All right, and now the next thing we need to do is take a look at that, that directional vector if I look at that, I notice it's not a unit vector, but we need a unit. Jeez, that was a little dyslexic. Oh boy. Okay, sorry about that glitch. Um, and sorry about my dyslexia. Let's try this again. Okay, so I'm gonna scratch this out because I know my eraser won't work right now. <laughs> Um, and so we were finding the unit, there we go, um, I want to find the unit vector. 
So what I need to do is I need to take that vector 1, 3 and then divide it by its own magnitude. So divide it by the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 squared, which is 9. So my unit vector is going to be 1 over root 10 and 3 over root 10. Okay. So if I use this first formula, then I've got my partial of f with respect to x, that was 14. So I'm finding my directional derivative here. So 14 was that partial of f with respect to x, and I need to multiply that by a, which is the x component of my unit vector. And then I'm gonna add to that the partial of f with respect to y, which was 4, multiplied by b, which is the y component of my unit vector. And if we add these together, we've got a common denominator of 10. 4 times 3 is 12, so that would be 26 over root 10, would be that directional derivative. Um, if we do this with that gradient, the gradient is the vector that has the partial with respect to x in the x component of the vector and the partial with respect to y in the y component of the vector. And then I have to dot that with the unit vector. So just notice I'm doing the exact same operation here. When I dot it, I multiply the x components together, and I add to it when I multiply the y components together, 4 times 3 divided by root 10, and I'm going to get that exact same, 26 over root 10. All right, um, we're going to talk about some other things that we can do with the gradient. Um, in the in the homework. Um, and so I think at this point I've kind of given you all the basics of the directional derivative.